amazed by Jesus. You know, very often you are, we are amazed by Jesus. We are amazed by God. We are amazed by what God does in the world, in the lives of people. But here you find in this passage, there's a man who amazed God. A man who amazed Jesus. I'll read that story, then we'll go through uh, Luke chapter 7 from verse 1 to 10. When he had concluded all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion slave who was highly valued by him was sick and about to die. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, requesting him to come and save the life of his slave. When they reached Jesus, they pleaded with him earnestly, saying, He is worthy for you to grant this, because he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. Jesus went with them, and when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to tell him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, since I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. That is why I don't even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be cured. For I too am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under my command. I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and he does it. Jesus heard this and was amazed at him, and turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found so great a faith even in Israel. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. So here we find it speaks about a centurion. A centurion is a person uh, who had authority over 100 men, you know, Roman soldiers. He was in charge of 100 people. The centurions are, you know, they are non-commissioned officers, or you can call it the captains. Uh, they are brave man, men. You know, they, uh, they came up the ranks, you know, through hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, you know, these people, you know, they, are, uh, they were in the forefront. They fought the battle. They showed courage. They showed bravery. And because of that, you know, they rose up in the rank and uh, they were made uh, leaders of hundred men, you know, the soldiers. So normally in the Roman world, generally, you know, the, they call it the Pax Romana, where the goal of Rome was to keep peace. You know, they don't want, they want trade to go well. They want the Roman Empire to prosper. So they didn't want any war. So their main goal is to keep peace and to collect the taxes. You know, keep the peace, no trouble, no violence, no riots, keep the peace, get the taxes. You know, this is what the Romans did. And the mainly, you know, this man, this centurion, you know, his name is not mentioned here. He was, you know, assigned to Galilee, where Herod Antipas, you know, he was the uh, king or the man who was ruling there at that time. So, uh, you know, these uh, men, these centurions, you know, they were not very good men. They were rough men. They were tough men. Uh, you know, sometimes they were ruthless. Uh, they didn't have any kindness in their heart. And if you had watched the Passion movie, uh, the scene of the crucifixion, you know how these Roman soldiers behave. You know, they had no heart for people, no compassion for people, hard-hearted, tough men. And this centurion is somewhat different to the normal. Uh, that's what we see in this passage. You know, it says, uh, when Jesus came to Capernaum, a centurion slave who was highly valued by him was sick and about to die. So here it says, a centurion, this Roman centurion, he had a slave and this slave was sick and he was about to die. And uh, the same story, if you go to Matthew, 
the same story you find in the book of Matthew, I think in chapter 8, where the sickness is mentioned as paralysis. You know, he was paralyzed and he was in acute pain. He was suffering, he was paralyzed, he was in acute pain and he was about to die. And the word, you know, if you, uh, he had a slave. Slave means the Greek word here used for slave is doulos. Doulos means a slave, the one who serves, a slave person. But in the same passage, uh, if you look at verse 7, it says, that is why I didn't even consider myself worthy to come to you, but say the word and my servant will be cured. So the word servant, another word is used here. You know, the first word used for servant is doulos, slave, servant. But in verse 7, there's another Greek word used for servant. That is pais, P-A-I-S. You know, that's Greek. You don't need to understand all that. But we need to know the meaning, the difference between these two words. So what is that word pais means? A young boy. Or it means a boy or a young boy. The slave who is sick was a young boy and he's about to die. And uh, I need to expand a little bit on slavery. As you know, in the first century Rome, uh, slavery was common. They said, you know, more than, I think, 70 or 80 percent of the population, they were all slaves. There were a few free people. But most of them were slaves. Um, and as you know, you know, slaves did not have any rights. You know, they were treated as commodities. You know, something, uh, one Roman writer named Cato, you know, he said, uh, he wrote and recommended that farmers examine their tools every year and throw out the old and broken ones, including slaves. So slaves are considered as tools. So a farmer examines all the tools which are broken, which he can't use the following year, he'll throw it out. And slaves are also thrown out. You know, if they're useless, if you can't get any work out of them, you know, they are thrown out. So once a slave was weak and once a slave was sick and this one was so sick, he was near to death. So that means they really rendered no purpose and their value. So a slave's value was only a material value. He didn't have any personal value. So as long as he's useful, as long as you can get work out of him, you know, slaves are treated as suit tools, you know, which uh, they throw them out. So, as far as this centurion is concerned, you know, he could have easily dumped this guy. You know, this young slave boy who is sick, he, you know, no use to him anyway. So, he could have easily said, you know, I don't need this man. You know, he's sick, he's about to die. What's the use of having him? I'll just dump this man. But here we find that the Bible is saying he highly valued this slave. You know, he valued this young man. And in, they say in Rome, you know, especially these young men were assigned to seasoned soldiers, you know, like the centurion. You know, they assign a young man to the centurion so that he can learn, learn like an intern. You know, he can learn from this man, you know, the bravery, the skills, uh, and all the uh, fighting abilities. You know, this is how they groom the future soldiers. So when these intern, you know, he was, normally they are assigned and they say, uh, you know, pedophilia was very common in those days because all these young boys, you know, they were abused, they were mistreated, you know, and as slaves, they didn't have any rights. Uh, they couldn't appeal to anybody. Uh, anyway, they didn't have any value as a human being. So they, uh, you know, they were so mistreated. But here we find this centurion, we find that he's totally different. Here he has a slave. He's about to die. He's paralyzed. He's of no use to him. But still, the Bible says he highly valued this slave. He highly valued him. You know, today we live in a world where, what, you know, sometime back I watched a documentary, you know, in Discovery Channel, you know, the, the title of the documentary was Modern Slavery. You know, if you think, you know, only in the first century there was slavery, 
even today uh, there is slavery you know one of the modern slaveries you know they were showing about you know trafficking these young women you know from you know remote parts of i think india and tibet and all these places and they traffic them and they take them promising life and everything goodness and they take them and they use them as sex workers they are slaves they have no rights they can say nothing you know this happens today in the world it's not only in the first century and of course you have child labor uh, where children are used so the main motivation as long as it can generate income as long as it can you know bring you profit you know that's what the message today as long as it can generate income as long as it can bring you profit you know whatever it is it doesn't matter you know drugs pornography human trafficking child labor anything goes why because essentially man has lost the value of human being you know generally you know people had even in the first century slaves only had material value nobody valued them personally but i want to tell you this morning god values you highly i mean you are highly valued by god you are loved by god you are precious to god god says in i have engraved you in the palm of my hand and he says i have, I have loved you with an everlasting love not because of what you can do for god not because of what he can get out of you but because you are made in his image you know that's what we celebrated this morning you know you could have easily uh, sent all of us to hell you know you could have said you know i'm going to wipe them out completely and i'll create another new race or whatever it is but god highly values you this morning every one of you now sometimes you know you may have gone through rejection you may have gone through abuse you may have gone through pain you may have gone through situations in your life sometimes maybe you are not valued even in your family you are not valued or in your workplace or whatever it is you know sometimes you know you feel like you know people don't value you but i want to tell you this morning that god loves you and god values you the most precious valuable commodity to god is you and me amen he loves you with an everlasting love you know you will never comprehend the extent of god's love for you on this side of eternity you know one only when you reach the other side you will fully understand and realize the love god has for you so here we find the centurion very different an affectionate man a loving man deep concern towards the slave boy who is about to die and not only that god loves you god also expects you to value people the same way when you go out there you know every day in your day to day life you are going to meet people they may not mean anything to you or they may not be useful to you uh, sometimes in you know, they may not be in a position where they can help you or whatever it is but still as humans god expects you to value them to love them and to share the love of god with them amen uh, so you know in the world out there today you know somebody said you know we uh, what do you call it um, today we use uh, people and we love things you know the world is so materialistic and we say you know people are used and things are loved uh, whereas it should be the other way around whereas you know we must be loving people and you know using you know whatever things but it has so changed the value system now let's go back to the passage when the so here we find in verse 3 when the centurion heard about Jesus he sent some Jewish leaders to him requesting him to come and save the life of his slave so this yeah, young slave boy is sick and uh, the centurion is helpless you know he didn't know what to do but suddenly he hears that Jesus is coming 
and he hears and then he asks the Jewish elders to help him, help him, you know, so that this servant can be healed. So the key is that somebody uh, has told this centurion about Jesus, who Jesus is. You know, as you know, when Jesus started his ministry, you know, he began to heal people, he cast demons out, uh, you know, he restored people, he gave sight to the blind, he healed the sick, he cast out demons, he raised the dead. And because of that, you know, Jesus' fame was spreading all around. And most probably the centurion, you know, somebody gave an account of Jesus, about Jesus to this centurion. He heard about him and when he heard, you know, he asked help from the Jewish leaders. You know, it's uh, in this, you know, I said he's an amazing man. One of the things, amazing things is that he cared for his sick slave. The second amazing thing is, you know, he had a good relationship with the Jewish leaders. Mostly, you know, the Jewish leaders, they hated the Romans. They had nothing to do with Romans. They hated them because they are a foreign power occupying their land and, you know, uh, taking taxes from them. So generally, you know, they didn't have a good relationship, you know, the Romans and the Jews. But here we find the Jewish leaders, you know, they are willing to go on behalf of this man and speak to Jesus. You know, one of the things, you know, if you read this passage, it says, when they reached Jesus, they pleaded with him earnestly, saying, he is worthy for you to grant this, because he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. So here it says, you know, he loved the Jewish nation and he has built a synagogue. So the Jewish people, you know, he, uh, so that means, you know, this man, of course, you know, what I believe is, you know, this man had made friends with the Jewish leaders. He has become very close to the Jewish people. He has built a synagogue for them and he loved the Jewish nation. You know, this is very uncommon. You know, no, normally, you know, people, the Romans, you know, they were hated by the Jews. But here we find right the opposite thing, you know, where the Jewish leaders are giving a good report about this man that you know he you know he had a different kind of love and this morning you know i want to encourage you know sometimes you know the world out there is always hostile you know before i came into ministry you know i worked 10 years i was in the secular world i was working so by working there and being a christian you know it's not easy it's hostile you know sometimes you know you are going against the current because, you know, sometimes they want to compromise and you don't want to compromise. You know, sometimes, you know, they may want to do things in a underhand way. And whereas, you know, you open your mouth and say something, you know, that brings unpleasantness in the atmosphere. You know, sometimes, you know, the, some of the moral stands that you take, you know, they are not very popular. But still, you know, we, you know, hostile. But still, we must always endeavor to build good relationship with the world out there. You know, this centurion, we find that, you know, though he was occupying the Israel, land of Israel, you know, he had a good relationship with these people. And he was willing to go on behalf of this Roman centurion, he was willing to go to Jesus and he was, the elders were willing to go on behalf of him, ask him to heal this servant. Uh, now you find, and when they reached Jesus, they pleaded with him earnestly saying, he is worthy for you to grant this because he loves our nation and built us the synagogue. So the key word here is, it says, you know, he is worthy is worthy for you to heal. You know, I want you to understand this this morning. You know, the Jewish leaders or the Jewish nation, you know, they were self-righteous people. They said, you know, they have, a, uh, they have kept all the law and they have obeyed God. And because of all that, the Jewish people thought, you know, they deserve everything from God. You know, they deserve to be blessed by God. You know, they are the blessed people, people who are called by God. So they thought, you know, they deserve everything from God. So, you know, their thing was that 
they were self righteous people and they said you know we love god we worship god and we deserve you know god has to bless us but this morning you know the thing about this century and what i want you to understand is that first thing we don't deserve anything from god actually what we deserve is you know what we deserve is judgment hell and damnation you know that's what we deserve actually if god wants wants to give us the real thing you know that's what god has to give if not for this table if not for the cross if not for jesus death on the cross on behalf of you and me all of us we will be heading towards hell we will be heading towards eternal damnation total separation from god you know we don't deserve anything from god you know sometimes you know some people get so upset with god some people get so angry with god some people feel you know god has to do this for me otherwise i'm going to turn my back on god why i deserve this you know i have been faithful to god you know one of the things about a story in the bible was you know two men went to pray one was a pharisee the other one was a tax collector the pharisee the jewish man was a self righteous man and what did he say lord i deserve your blessing i deserve your blessing why i go to the synagogue i fast twice a week i give tithe i tithe on everything so i am deserved to be blessed but there was another tax collector you know the bible says you know he beat his breast and he didn't even lift up his head to look at god he humbled himself uh, and he said i am not worthy even to enter your presence and jesus said whom did god bless in that story actually the tax collector who said i am not worthy i do not deserve you know he was blessed by god not the man who felt self righteous so what we must understand here is you know if you want to really have faith if you want to really experience the blessing of god the number one thing is we must humble ourselves before god you know this centurion you know the story he experienced a miracle jesus went and did a powerful miracle uh, and raised i mean actually he didn't go to his home i'll come to that later but did a miracle number one you know he was a loving man number two he highly valued people number three he was a humble man he humbled himself he you know when jesus was coming coming to his home you know what did he say let's read that part you know he said verse six Jesus went with them and when he was not far from the house the centurion sent friends to tell him lord don't trouble yourself since i am not worthy to have you come under my roof that is why i didn't even consider myself worthy to come to you but say the word and my servant will be healed so what he is saying is don't come to my house and i am also not going to come to you you know you you i i am not worthy to have you under my roof and neither am i neither am i going to come to you because i am not worthy you know the thing about this man you know i believe what amazed this what amazed jesus was this man more than the jewish people who had all the law and everything this man had a greater revelation of who jesus was than all the jewish people you know one of the things about you know sometimes you know we bring god down to our level you know one of the things you know we never understand the awesomeness and the holiness of god you know if if really god appears in his glory in this place you know i don't think any of us can stand in his presence presence of a holy god you know in isaiah when isaiah saw the lord you know in isaiah chapter 6 it says when uzziah died when king uzziah died the bible says isaiah saw the lord you know if you have your bible go home and read isaiah chapter 6 and he says isaiah saw the lord and you know the word you know sometimes you find the word in that passage from verse 1 to 6 sometimes you will have the word lord in it will start with l and simple o simple r simple d 
what does it mean you know it the there are two hebrew words that come there one is the word lord means adonai adonai means the sovereign one the sovereign lord he saw the sovereign lord the second thing the second word the lord will appear again you know we have no time to go you know i was not thinking of sharing this with you but you can go home and read this part the second word the lord will appear in capital letters l o r d you know that's the name of the name of god is the i am the god who appeared to moses in the wilderness the great i am so when isaiah saw this mind you isaiah was the most righteous person in israel at that time he was a prophet he obeyed god he kept the law he was a righteous man but when isaiah saw the lord what happened he said woe be unto me he said woe be let me be cursed let me be let me die woe be unto me and he said i am a man of unclean lips you know when you really see god you know you begin to see your unworthiness you begin to see that you don't deserve even to stand before this holy god who has been gracious to us who has been loving to us but a god who is holy and righteous he is the great i am and you know this man you know he humbled himself and he saw for who jesus was you know some people say you know he didn't want jesus to come because he was a gentile and jesus was a jew and generally gentiles didn't go to the house of a, a jews didn't enter the house of a gentile most probably that's true but beyond that you know when you look at this man's response i see that he saw jesus as holy and himself as a sinner and he said you know i am not worthy to have him under my roof you know what happened to peter you know peter was you know cleaning up his nets and suddenly jesus came and the multitude surrounded him and jesus said peter i want to use your boat give me your boat because i want to talk to these people and then he preached after he preached he told peter to take the boat somewhat into the deep and he said cast the net and what happened when he cast the net you know the net was filled with fish you know unbelievable you know it was a real miracle people got a shock you know what did peter say you know peter could have easily said okay jesus let's strike a deal once a month you come here uh, say a word 50% for you 50% for me yeah we'll have a good life good profit did he say that he said depart from me lord for i am a sinful man depart from me lord for i am a sinful man and this morning you know sometimes you know we have not seen the awesomeness and the holiness of who god is now i believe you know when we see who god is you know pride says pride says i deserve i deserve this you know god i but humility says i do not deserve i receive by grace i humble myself that's why god says you know god opposes the proud but he gives grace to the humble and i believe this morning you know some of you you know god is going to touch you god is going to minister to you and i believe you know god is going to heal you this morning but it comes with humility it comes when you humble yourself before god and cast yourself and you know, a prideful person can say you know i can depend on myself but a humble person will cast himself or herself fully upon god fully cast yourself upon god you know there are so many amazing things about this person you know finally as you know jesus was amazed by this man amazed by this faith and he said you know he said a very powerful thing to jesus you know i i am not going to come to you neither do i want you to come into my house but he said say the word and my servant will be healed say the word 
and my servant will be healed you know what this man understood was the authority and the power of god's word the word that jesus spoke he realized you know this word that he speaks it has power it has authority it can change and transform people's life it can bring healing and hope into a situation where there's no hope and you know most of you you know you're hearing me i am very passionate about god's word i am very passionate about the revealed word of god because i believe this word has power to change your life this word has power to bring healing god said you know i will send my word and he said i will heal you i will send forth my word and i will heal you i will restore you you know if you understand you know many times sometimes you know we go from sunday to sunday uh, we hear a message then we go on for a week and sometimes you know we take this book uh, and we read it because you know it is something that we have to read but i want to tell you if you really understood the power and the authority behind god's word you know this word can bring healing wholeness you know, everything it's going to come from the word of god god has principles for everything the word of god has power the word of god has authority you know jesus stood outside the tomb of lazarus and what did he say you know he didn't say now remove the stone i have to get into the tomb and i have to you know get hold of lazarus and pray for him he didn't do anything like that he said lazarus come out that word only two words there's a man dead for four days and what did jesus do he used only two words lazarus somebody said the name lazarus otherwise if you said come forth all would have come out so he, so he, he mainly is a lazarus so he said lazarus come forth two words but those words you know the whole of heaven and earth you know power back those words and it went and brought life to a dead body that was there for four days and god raised him from the dead you know he came out walking and that word you know so this man you know he he said you know i am a man centurion said i am a man under authority you know when i tell people to go they go when they tell them to come they come i tell this guy to do this and they do it why because my word as he understood authority he understood authority and i want to tell you this morning that god's word has authority god's word has power it can bring change into your situation into your circumstances here is a man who was having utterly hopeless it begins with death you know yes the servant was a slave was about to die but you know jesus he said speak the word and when Jesus heard this you know he said say the word speak the word and my servant will be healed and when Jesus heard this the bible says you know he was amazed he was astonished he was amazed why because he turned and he said you know uh, i tell you in verse 9 i have not found so great a faith even in israel i haven't found so great a faith even in israel so what is the great of faith you know jesus realized this man understood the authority of god's word what is the great of faith this morning that amazes god that amazes jesus what is the great faith you know the faith is you know when when jesus um uh, thomas you know he said uh, unless i touch him unless i feel him i am not going to believe that he is raised from the dead i am not going to believe that then jesus came and he showed him his hand thomas put your fingers here side my hands everything see and then what did jesus say 
you know because you have seen you have believed but he said blessed are those who do not see and yet believe you know faith is about sometimes you don't see but you believe god's word you apply god's word and you know when you read god's word you know god will personally give you a word like you know peter he said when he was jesus walked on the water peter was there on the boat and jesus said peter come forth he said lord can i come and he said peter come forth god is a personal god for your situation he will give you a word you know this is the logos god's word and out of this will come a revelation to you for your situation god will speak a word but for that to happen you know you must get into this book you must read and meditate and out of this will come the rema word for your situation that will release the power of god that will set you free you know like this man you know when jesus spoke the word you know the servant was healed he was restored and i believe this morning you know whatever situation you are in you know god has a word for you a word in season god told isa you know a word in season to a soul that is weary god has a word for you you don't have to look at the situation you don't have to look at the circumstances you don't have to be overwhelmed by what is coming against you or what is going on in your life why because god has a word for that situation to obey to apply that word you know that will release the power of god into that situation that will release god's answer to that situation so i want you know don't be just casual and you know just look at this a religious book uh, and just read but open your heart pray you know last time is in psalm 119 david prayed you know when i read this please open my eyes that i may see the beautiful things in your law and i may experience so this morning you know i want to encourage you you know the uh, this amazing thing about this century you know he was a loving man he was a kind man he was a humble man he was a generous man he used his own money he built a synagogue and generally what happens in a synagogue in the synagogue they teach god's word so most probably you know he, he loved the word of god so he was a generous man and finally you know this is what touched the heart of jesus he was a man of faith now i have never seen such great faith in all of israel this morning you know god is looking at our hearts you know jesus can see your heart the faith how we taking god's word seriously and believing god's word you know the for your circumstances for your situation you know god has an answer through the word the word became flesh but now jesus has ascended the holy spirit is in you and he has given us his word and when you apply that word you know god can bring healing and wholeness to you and god can bless your life amen i mean so i want you to open your heart this morning let's uh, let's rise to our feet just look to the lord you know jesus the bible says you know jesus is yesterday today is the same forever you know there's no changing in god god's word is eternal unchangeable you know it can bring transformation into your life this morning you know god has an answer for you the power of god is going to be revealed in that situation the power of god is going to be demonstrated in that situation you know when you get hold of his word you know the word the spoken word the rema word the word that's coming into that situation i will send forth my word and i will heal you i will send forth my word and i will break the power of the enemy i will send forth my word and take away your anxiety and worry oh worry is offset by trust and faith and hope 
God says, I will bring my word. I will speak my word into that situation. Amen. Amen.